Greetings! I'm Septim Sin, and you're watching Septim Sin vs. the World. So today, on the Criterion Collection, see I'm holding my glasses like this because a lot of well-read individuals, they use reading glasses only, so they can actually see, which I'm blind as a bat right now, but they tend to hold these like this because they can gesture and they look all classy. And of course, if they put those on, they do this so that they can, you know, see above, but then read below. Yes. So we're on another episode of the Criterion series. And for today's Criterion, we have Babette's Feast. A lovely film. The Danish creates such lovely expressionist work. I mean, there are lots of expressionists, like, um, well, let's not go there, actually. Uh, some of them are a little bit too expressive. But Babette's Feast is a lovely little tale. I had no idea what I was getting into when I actually started this. I mean, it looked like something to do with food. <laughs> but of course, it was also a lovely Criterion film. I knew it was going to be very artsy. So I picked it up on a whim from a Criterion sale and decided to go ahead and make this review. So Babette's Feast has three main stars. The two sisters who sacrificed love, individuality, and personal gain in order to dedicate their entire lives to God, their father, and to themselves. Well, during one of their encounters, uh, they've touched the heart of one man who sends over Babette, fleeing the, uh, well, the terrible turbulence that had surrounded France at the time so that she could serve them. So she serves them for free. And as the time goes on, they form a bond. Up until a special event changes things forever, which of course leads into Babette's feast. So I love the setting. That's actually one of the first things that I that I can say about this film. The setting was uh, astounding. I mean, very calming. You can actually feel the love around, the closeness of the village, uh, the calm of the sea, just as they go along their everyday lives. And the way that they illustrate this as time goes by it's like you can feel the village itself getting older, aging with the characters, and slowly dying, so that it's almost left with a small bit of heartache at the end. The story takes a pretty obvious turn, but still it is a decent story nevertheless. Such a simplistic idea put into form conveyed itself quite well. Uh, the, of course, the costumes, makeup, all of that was very well done. And, of course, the acting was very believable. I can't 100% whenever something's in a foreign language because expression is, expressions of voices, sentence structures, things like that, I don't know where all of that syntax lines up. So they could be saying their lines terribly, and it sounds great to me because I'm an American, I'm stupid, I don't know what I'm doing on that aspect. Um, so, to my ears at least, it sounds like everything is A-OK. -okay. So, with that being said, let's talk about some lower qualities. Um, with this film, we have a tendency to drag a little bit. I feel like a lot of emphasis was put into trying to convey the characters to you. But the problem is many of the characters, though the leads are very interesting, a lot of the side characters are not as much. 
and watching them bicker amongst each other or eventually forgive their own differences it just gets to feeling a little bit preachy and uh, I don't really like being preached to I mean I'd go to church more if I was preached to I uh, like being preached to so uh, I, I will uh, I have to say I'm not sure it's, I'm totally forgiving of that but other than that I really don't find a lot of fault with it. But again, dragging is a, is a big fault for me. So even though the writing is very good, the art direction is very good, the acting is very good, and the music actually has a lot of great qualities to it, I still cannot give it above a 7 out of 10. Again, boredom is the cardinal sin. This is not bore me. If I'm bored too much, I'll put a very bad review up, and if I'm bored to a certain point, I lose all interest in the film and then I can't review it because I don't understand what happened. Which is why uh, Day for Night's not going to be on here, because I every time I watch it I can't concentrate on it long enough to actually get a full enjoyment out of it. Same thing with Il Postino. In fact, there's never been a time I've watched Il Postino that I have not fallen asleep. But since I did not fall asleep, I still give this a 7 out of 10. So for you Criterion fans who love something artsy, love something deep, and like a little bit of a religious message in your movie watching, pick up Babette's Feast. You won't go wrong. And this Criterion Collection edition of course has plenty of special features. I, uh, I prefer the DVDs a lot of the time. Even though Blu-ray gives you a better picture quality, the DVDs are much cheaper. <laughs> so you'll see a lot of the DVDs. Occasionally you'll see a Blu-ray, but those pop up as, you know, occasionally as they are. So with that, I'm Septim Sen, and I hope you've all enjoyed this review. If you like the video, please hit the like button. Of course, subscribe, share, and keep those views coming. Uh, the more views we get, the better off we are. So, we will see you again with our next viewing.